Hey guys, Sven here with a new Northcast market update. I think it's about due for one. It's been a couple of wild weeks in market for a what seems like a standard type of September correction. And the question as we approach October here is are markets ready to rip or rest in peace? I think that's probably the question on a lot of people's minds. Bears have been screaming, obviously, uh, as they do during downside. And we, I think when we go through a correction like we just did, I think it's important to keep an eye on the big picture in terms of what's been happening and what actually the damage has been done or not done. So let's go through it. I think you may find this of interest. So first of all, going back to my mega bull case, August 20th, where I talked about these presidential pre-election years which we are now in one with these uh, odd number of years for every four years apart, obviously. And one of the key points I made in there that these rallies that come out of these, out of August lows in particular, they may get back tested, they may make a higher low, or they make, may make a marginal new low after an initial rally uh, following the August lows into September and then the scary time in later September, October. And I submit to you that's exactly what we've seen so far. And one of the charts I pointed out there in reference was NIMO. This was one of the key signal charts. And what I highlighted there is that the best lows typically come as from a positive divergence, which is when you make a new low on the S&P, but you make a higher low on the NIMO. Not always necessary, but We've seen that last year, we've seen it a number of years, and you can obviously check this stuff out in the video, in the original video. But let's look at what happened just now. Uh, also keep an eye on this trend line. It's very interesting how this all set up. We just tagged this trend line, we had a little poke below, and guess what? We made a higher low on the NIMO, that's a positive divergence and just looking at last year these were the signs for a low at least for a larger rally to come so in this context what we've seen so far is not unusual it just kind of fits the standard script and what i highlighted might be a distinct possibility now this trend line obviously is key support and was fought over uh, this week poked below it and now we have a minute bounce above it we obviously had some more weakness on friday and so this is a key battle zone but i will just highlight again this came in context of a positive divergence on nymo another signal chart i highlighted in august that was in, in the video called floored that was the bpsbx and if you look at that video again, I pointed out obviously it was very oversold and we would likely get some sort of bounce, but there was risk into the 150 MA, which at the time was around 43.17. And that would fit with some of these tags we've seen in previous years uh, before, especially in this, in this kind of time frame, right? The 150 MA. And guess what? That's just what we hit. We hit the 150 MA. In fact, we pierced it on one day, but it was it was held as support into the close. Uh, tagged it a couple of times after that. I think three, four times, and it's held as support every single time. And this is what we've seen plenty of times before as well. Now the actual read here is quite fascinating. In August, we had a read into 13, which was low. It's not the most extreme low that we've seen. We've seen lows in the single digits before in terms of oversold reading but we also managed to still hold a tiny positive divergence it hit about right a 14 on friday uh close just slightly above it but either way you cut it or slice it this is oversold can it get worse sure but the extend the extension of time sitting this low remember we had this bounce into mid-september early september this is unusual that it stays that low for that long typically what you see when you get these extreme low readings you get a bounce higher and that is very much outstanding at this point and remember we're about to enter into very much positive seasonality you can clearly have a new low in october that's been happening many times before beginning of the month middle of the month later in the month there's there's a lot of historic precedents for that. 
but it also doesn't need to happen, right? So this is this is the interesting part. So if you're counting on downside to continue in markets, you're going to have to deal with not only positive divergences that are already in place, but also extensive oversold readings that have uh, been creeping in markets for a couple of months now. Uh, so not to see a move higher here on the RSI would be unusual in context of the market's history. Um, even last year, when we, you know, when we had this rather extensive you know, scare in markets and were below the 150 MA for most of it, you saw regular counter bounces into at least 60s or 70s on the RSI. That hasn't happened yet. So just a reminder of where we are. Um, also, a few weeks ago, I had this interview with um, Adam Taggart over at Wealthy. And you haven't seen this. I encourage you to watch this. Uh, I want to highlight something from that interview, which I think is super critical here. And that was me pointing out the VIX. And I'll just show, show you what I said about the VIX at that time. So bear with me. Here's a quick excerpt from that interview. And so when the August correction happened, there was a big test in, in our minds whether the VIX was still technically relevant. And that was on the lows August 18th. Uh, my wife, who is always tracking the VIX, she sent me a chart I share with clients, and it was fascinating. On the day of the lows, the VIX was approaching that broken trend line. And that was kind of the moment where we said, okay, this is now a show me moment. Is the VIX still relevant? Is it not? And if it's relevant, then technically it would reject that trend line. I, mean, I actually posted those charts on my, my Twitter feed as well. And guess what? The VIX hit that trend line I mean, so precisely, so cleanly, and then just got absolutely monkey hammered down. So, you know, I, I can argue with it. Anyone can argue with it. But the fact is, that's what it did. I mean, just it just tagged it and got rejected hard. And, you know, we've been rallying ever since from, from that August 18th low. It's been pretty impressive. Now, having said all that, you know, on Friday, uh, the VIX closed around 13. You know, do do I feel comfortable saying the VIX is going to stay low here in September and October? No, I'm I'm not. Uh, I would probably expect some volatility to come back in. But I think the main message of this chart now is the big bull bear divide line is that trend line. For bears to really break this market, you need to get above that trend line and stay above it. Otherwise, you got nothing. Now, in context, everything you've heard. I just said that the VIX trend line was the critical divide between bull and bear control. And what's, what did September do? I mean, right here on September 26, at the lows, I pointed out, you know, this is now key here. I, I, I think the call low came the day after or something like that. This was a key pivot on the VIX. Uh, isn't it time to crush the VIX because we just hit that rising trend line again, still broken, still the the kind of moment that we had in August. Who's in control here? Are bulls able to defend us as resistance, so to speak? Can bears crack through this and bring about the great bear market? Well, we just closed the month and the quarter, and guess what? It rejected again. So, I mean, if you're still doubting about technical relevance of the VIX, it's still relevant because it matters. It doesn't matter whether we think it's true or not true. It's what actually the market thinks is true and relevant. And the market has just again shown the VIX to be respectful of this trend line. So that's very interesting, right? Uh, because it just again validates what happens in August. For bears to really take control of this market, they need to push above this. And it hasn't happened. I'm not saying it can't happen in October. I'm just saying in September, despite all the down move and all the volatility, it again held as resistance. And one of the other things I said in the original Mega Bull video is, and this is also key, uh, that you would often ex experience these either higher lows, retests, or marginal new lows. And on the S&P, I think we got a you know, what, 2.2% or 2.4% move lower vis-a-vis -vis what we saw in August. I call that marginal. 
on the S&P was even less than that. In fact, you know, if you look at this in terms of trend line control, i.e. the VIX, you know, this trend line here on the NDX the tech sector held quite nicely. And you can argue this could be a massive bull flag. That would be fitting with a lot of these precedent examples that we've seen in these presidential pre-election years or even just a standard uh, seasonality for for the market. So, you know, has damage been inflicted? Yeah, I mean, you, you certainly drop below key MAs, uh, but you also see patterns holding and, you know, the VIX holding and so forth in context of vast oversold readings. So, yeah, bulls have a lot to prove, I would say, but as long as these structures hold, and don't break down you know, there's a big opportunity for a year and rally to emerge and then you know if you look at like some of the weakest that we've seen like um you know small caps uh that you know they held the uptrend you know what's broken nothing's broken got very oversold on the rsi and we've seen that a few times last year obviously and typically that ended up in sizable bounces junk you know high yield credit was there a big break of any sort during this correction? The answer is at this point, no. The uptrend here held as well. Is it shaky? Absolutely. You know, for bulls to really succeed, you need to get above here and stay above it. Tried during, during the summer, uh, but so far there is no real evident damage. Which brings me to this, you know, uh, which is I, what I pointed out on the 26. Seems like key time in markets because you can make the case for some sort of bull flag or cup and handle here on the S&P. And this price zone is, is pivotal. Now, in context of the 150 MA that I pointed out with BPSBX, we got this kind of scare move lower. But guess where they closed the week? Right at this pivot line. So what I'm saying is the market is in a key phase of control. Um, and, you know, the, this next month, I think, is kind of key. You know, here's something else to point out. You know, it's been four red weeks in a row. You know, it, it happens rarely. Uh, that's what I also said in the Wealthy interview. You know, the, the time bears have to play is usually rather limited in terms of the length of correction. I mean, we saw that here tail end last year was four red candles. Then you know you get three, you got three here. Now we got four. Uh, we had one really bad run last year uh, during the peak kind of tightening uh, process and scare. Uh, but other than that, it was also just kind of the three, four variety at all. So the questions for bulls, for bears, is to ask themselves: Can they pull off a four, fifth week in a row, a sixth week in a row in, in October? and break these patterns right and of course what has been greatly adding to the market angst that we saw just now in september what two things one is the incredible run in the dollar uh, which was 11 weeks straight we haven't seen this i think the last time we saw this was 2014. what's interesting to me about the dollar here is that it's built a really clean rising wedge pattern and it's tight right and it keeps respecting uh these trend lines on on the resistance side and on the uh, support side in fact this was the day when powell talked about soft landing no longer being his base case that's kind of what started the the real sell-off because all of a sudden fud fear uncertainty doubt because he had just put out the, or the Fed had just published its updated economic forecast, which was better than the one before and showed a soft landing. That's their forecast is a soft landing. But then he says it's not his baseline. Well, what is your baseline then if that's not your baseline? So this was from a communication perspective, I think was poorly handled. Uh, and then, of course, he went back later in the press conference and talked about how, oh, you know, it's it's a primary objective well if it's a primary objective then you got to be very careful that you don't lose control over i.e the workings of currency and yields and i'll get to yields in a moment so what we saw on friday we kind of got that drop again and then it bounced back into this channel so what happens here with the dollar is absolutely critical because the relationship with equities that was ignored here in the summer is now coming back 
to haunt here a little bit. And what, from a technical perspective, bulls want to see is a, is a break of this uptrend, because then then this would be supportive of equities. And the other big animal here, of course, is yields. This move absolutely mahusive, and. It's interesting that considering the the size of this move, that we haven't seen that real break in markets uh, that support held uh, in in context, and we only got these marginal new lows. We have a big negative divergence on the weekly. We have a bit of a rejection candle, and of course, this is all very complicated because it also relates to the refilling of the TGA account and the just the continued debt that has to be issued. Uh, but let's be very clear here, and I said this on Twitter as well, uh, if, if this does not ultimately ease off or, or very quickly, then they can kiss their soft landing goodbye. And the, I guess the irony is once you see real recession risk, then of course, uh, that's when um, yields drop anyway, and then things get gnarly. But in this context, let me also be very clear here. This is what I also talked in the wealthy interview. It's the runway. It's when the yield curve uninverts that you then see that the runway for markets to still rally higher. Okay, and it just started uninverting, and it's not until the reinversion process runs to positive that's when you see a recession. We're not in a recession right now. Uh, there's tons of risk factors, obviously, but in terms of time into year end, it's still not there. But I think everybody has to be very clear that the market is queuing off this, this right now. This is a chart of the TNX to 10-year yield vis-a-vis -vis the S&P inverted, right? So it shows you actually how this tick for tick relationship has been working uh, throughout September, really. And the summer markets had ignored it. Now they're not ignoring it. And now it mattered. So you know, when 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 you see the S&P uh, go down, here, for example, in, in in the chart in pink, it actually means it's going up because it's inverted. Uh, but you see that relationship with the 10 year goes up, obviously markets go down and vice versa. So very important to keep watching. And, you know, if you see if you see any solid reversal in yields, given these oversold readings, markets can really rip. So in conclusion, I would submit to you this, the VIX trend line has held as resistance, bears have not been able to break it, and they need to break it. The other thing, if I look at it in terms of the big bull bear control pivot picture, look at this quarterly chart, the quarterly five EMA and the S&P. It's, you know, mega chart goes back decades. It's super important uh, to keep an eye on this one as well. Uh, when do you really have a bear market? Uh, you have a bear market when you have consistent red candles below the quarterly five EMA. You had that in 2008. You had that obviously in 2000, and you notice how the 5 EMA is constant resistance during the bear market. In fact, that's what happened last year as well. In between these big bear markets, you can have you know the occasional red candle uh, that maybe holds the 5 EMA as support, which happens in most cases. You know, we had this here, we had this here in this phase, we had this here, obviously. You get the occasional two red candles, which can be scary, right? We had this year, 2015, 2016, and 2011. But those are really rare, right? The, the most common ones are just the singular red candles that hold support. Well, guess what had just happened? We haven't even touched it in September, which was, or in this last quarter, which is interesting. You know, the, that EMA is currently sitting at 4180 Eight. So if you hear bears declaring victory in the end of the bull market, this chart says no. It, there is no evidence as of yet for bears to break this market and bring this back into a bear market mode. They need to break below the quarterly five EMA. Now, new quarter is starting. We get a new number for this, 4188. But I submit to you at this point, it's not broken. So you got two things. You got of markets that's not been broken, that fell into historic support, i.e. the 150 MA, that's extremely oversold, and that's now 
heading into positive seasonality, barring any more shakiness in maybe in October. So without a break, I suggest to you, with given these signals, that the market is continuing to follow a historic script and is set up to rip higher, pending you see a reversal in dollar and yields. If they don't reverse, then yes, if they keep pushing higher both on both fronts, then I think bears have a shot at breaking this level of control on the VIX and on the S&P here. But for now, they haven't, and you have conspicuous, continuous bullish structures in markets that could rip this market higher if you get that reversal in yields in dollar. And I think that's going to be the battle here in October. And, you know, from, from our perspective, obviously, if, if yields in dollar go higher, then we have a different market and we're going to have to reassess. But, you know, to declare rest in peace on this bull market, I think is a bit premature at this point without any evidence to support it. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you want to join us and how we're navigating through these markets on a directional basis, uh, you're welcome to join us via NorthmanTrader.com, Daily Market Brief, Live Action Alerts, or market videos where I go into a lot more detail uh, on all these considerations and hope that's uh, helpful to you. Anyway, let's see what happens in October. Uh, interesting times as always. Take care.